Svalbard feels like it's on the edge of the earth. It is a brutal landscape, cold, barren, and fierce. In winter, the place is completely covered with snow and in darkness, and in summer, you get 24 hours daylight, and so it's a real area of extremes. The town itself is the world's northernmost settlement of a 1,000 people or more. You can't live any farther north than this. As the seasons change and the snow melts, crumbling ruins appear on the mountainside above the main town. But these old wrecks aren't the only deserted structures here. Most of the town seems to be doing fine and it's populated, but then you have these pockets that are abandoned. We're used to seeing old abandoned buildings on the brink of collapse, but these buildings look fine. It looks like you could move in. It just doesn't seem to make sense. That's because the real issue is hidden completely from view. A first clue to what's happening here may be found in those collapsing ruins above. On the edge of town are these old industrial looking features just standing there, forlorn and forgotten. The way these buildings have fallen into this condition makes you wonder if the same fate awaits those modern buildings in town. A deadly threat hovers over this town and it could yet have far-reaching consequences. The issues that are facing this town are quite serious, in fact, potentially deadly. Already, two lives have been lost. What's happening here is terrifying. What we're seeing here is the beginnings of something that could soon be beyond our control, and the destructive forces unleashed could be catastrophic. A distant and perilous place to visit in the 19th century. Over a hundred years ago, this land held little value for most. Originally, the only people who would go to this far northern collection of islands were whalers and people hunting seals. But in 1906, an American named John Longyear came here looking for coal. Early 20th century, late 19th century, the world is going through changes which are driven by coal. So a resource such as coal found in an area like this is potentially very, very valuable. The town of Longyearbyen grew on the back of the coal industry. But in the modern world, the luster of coal has diminished, and structures like these have paid the price. More recently, coal has become a, a sort of more of a dirty word than uh, something people want. And so the actual scaling back of coal mining globally has happened, but it's also happened in, in Svalbard. A slump in the market could mean less demand for housing in the town. But there is more to this story than first meets the eye. The apartments that have been abandoned that is not related to the decline of coal. There's a completely different problem there. These people have been forced out because of a deadly threat to those buildings. With all that mining in the area over the years, you've got to wonder if that's created an issue. Has it destabilized the land somehow? What danger lurks here? Why have virtually brand new buildings been abandoned to the Arctic tundra? In the northernmost town in the world sits a group of condemned buildings deemed unsafe to live in by the local authorities. There's nothing wrong with the building. It's structurally sound. The problem is the location. Something has changed that makes it more dangerous. It's a terrible feeling to see all these empty buildings standing around and nobody can use them. Nobody lives up here anymore. Nils Lawrenson lived in a similar apartment near here until recently. And he's seen more and more places become off limits to residents. There are red zones, a lot of places in this area. And 
a lot of people are affected by these red zones. And it costs the, the community and people a lot of money. We have a kindergarten. Both my kids went there, and uh, that kindergarten is closed now. It's a sad, sad story. During the summer months, those apartments are not at risk. But when winter comes, the threat level rises. As Nils experienced firsthand just a few years ago. I was just leaving my house, and suddenly it was a big bang in the house. And straight away, I understood that this was an avalanche, and it was big. It was uh, enormous. It had a lot of speed. I saw in my daughter's bedroom, and uh, I could see straight out her wall because of the building has broke apart. Neil's apartment can be seen in aerial footage taken before the avalanche struck. But it wasn't the first victim. Other buildings have also been destroyed in recent years. In 2015, a massive sudden avalanche hit the town. Imagine a huge sheet of ice, snow, and stone crashing into these houses with such force that it literally lifted them up and deposited them across the street. It soon emerged that eight people had been injured and two people had been killed. Nobody believed that it could be so large avalanches that could hit the houses and kill people. And I think no, nobody thought it. Uh, that could happen. While avalanche barriers stand above the town today, for those hollowed out apartments, the risks are just too great. The danger that those other apartments faced in recent years, this place now faces that same threat. Come winter, they'll be right in the firing line. And the order has come down to completely evacuate and demolish this place. Today, it's not only those apartments that lie inside this red zone. These structures weren't built in a dangerous location. The location has become dangerous. So what caused this? Standing solemnly on the outskirts of the town are the collapsing structures that hold the clues to the issue at hand. And there's a startling conclusion being drawn. The irony here is that the very industry that built this community also endangers it. And that's the process of mining and burning coal, which releases so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that ultimately it starts to warm the planet. At the local university, glaciologist Heidi Sylvestre has been studying the changes affecting Svalbard. Uh, the black curve is the changes in temperatures globally for the past 120 years. And the orange curve is the changes in temperatures in Svalbard. When we look at happening for the past two or three decades, there the temperatures really diverge. And we see the temperatures in Svalbard increase twice as fast as the rest of the world. Since 1971, on average, temperatures here have risen by four degrees Celsius. This is the fastest warming place on Earth. It's like an exaggerated version of global warming, if you will, but it has deadly consequences and it's really changing the local environment. And the people living there have to dramatically change their lifestyles to cope with it. For the homes that have been lost already, and for those now in the firing line, this drastic temperature change has made large avalanches a very real threat. This kind of avalanche isn't uncommon, but it's not supposed to happen in the high Arctic, in the super cold environment. It was made possible by this unprecedented warmth. Today, we can absolutely draw a link between climate change and the 2015 avalanche. And unfortunately, our predictions define that there will be more and more events like this in the future. Today, Avalanches are not the only consequence of climate change Svalbard faces. Its glaciers are rapidly receding, 
and the archipelago seas no longer freeze in winter. The location may be remote, but these alarming events are a warning to us all.